Funerals occur on a daily basis throughout this land. When we attend the funeral of a loved one, our own mortality comes to light because we realize that we too will someday die. Well, today we want to look into scripture and talk about death and life. The scriptures have quite a bit to say about death and life. Well, greetings, my name is David Brett, bringing you Revealing the Truth. Today we want to talk about some scriptures that are typically brought up during a funeral, uh, talking about the uh, limited life that we have here on the earth, a time in which uh, comes and then goes in a breath. In Psalm 90, we find uh, a prayer of Moses that has evidently put, been put in here uh, along with the other Psalms to give us insight, to help us to understand our own mortality. Of course, this comes up when we attend a funeral of a loved one. We go through the mourning process. We think about our own lives and our own mortality because as we get older, we realize that we're not going to continue on forever. But there is that hope a hope of eternal life, and we'll, we'll talk about that as well. But let's look into uh, this prayer of Moses and consider what is said here. Psalm 90, verse 1, and we'll go through 15. It says, Yahweh, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are El. You turn man back into dust and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by. So a day uh, to Yahweh is like a thousand years to us. Or as a watch in the night, you have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. Interesting, they fall asleep. We'll want to look at that in other areas of Scripture because that's exactly how death is described. It says, In the morning they are like grass which sprouts anew. In the morning it flourishes and sprouts anew. Toward evening it fades and withers away. Describing our lives. We have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath we have been dismayed. You have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins in light of your presence, for all our days have declined in your fury. And we have finished our years like a sigh. As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years. Yet their pride is full of labor and sorrow, for soon it is gone and we fly away. We understand the power of your anger and your fury according to the fear that is due you. Or actually, this can be posed as a question. Who understands the power of your anger and your fury according to the fear that is due you? So teach us to number our days, that we may present to you a heart of wisdom, that we may have understanding when we come before him. Do return, O Yahweh, how long will it be? And be sorry for your servants. O oh, satisfy us with the morning, with your gladness, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days you have afflicted us, or have allowed affliction to come upon us, and the years we have seen evil. And of course, this world, especially now, is full of evil. And there's crying and sighing over the, the evils in this world. But there's good news. Those that recognize the evil and depart from it, that come out of her, uh, they will be protected, they will be given comfort, and they will be given even unto eternal life. But there are some misunderstandings about life and death, what happens after we die. Well, as we already read here, there is a 
a, a description of sleep. And so when we look in other areas, we find this described when people die. Why is that? Well, let's go over to John, John chapter 11, and starting in verse uh, 1, we'll go through 45. Um, John 11, 1, starting in 1. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed Yahweh, or the master rather, with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent word to him saying, Master, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Yahshua heard this, he said, this sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of Yahweh, so that the son of Yahweh may be glorified by it. Now Yahshua loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going to go there again? And Yahshua answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the night or the light is not in him. So he's referring to the, those that were after him. They were going to end up stumbling, not having their way. I do believe is what was being described here. But this he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him out of that sleep. So here the terminology of sleeping. Now when we sleep, we go to bed. In fact, uh, we, we did so last night. Hopefully we got a good rest. Well, in the morning, uh, we are refreshed. We wake up. We may have not dreamt anything, but and even if we did, we may not remember what the dream was. But we wake as if no time has passed. And what we understand from Scripture is that death is as a sleep. This is how it was understood anciently by Moses and others. This is how it is understood in the first century by Yahshua himself and by others, including, uh, as we'll read through here, uh, one who understood about the resurrection. And we understand this today. So whether it was in the past, at this time, or today, we have the same understanding. However, there is a different understanding in the world that emanates from a false teaching of um, an immortal soul, which throughout Scripture we don't find such a term describing something that we have. We do not have an eternal soul, an eternal being within us. We have uh, and we will seek after the hope of an eternal life. Yahweh himself has eternity within him. And so we are seeking after this eternal life. And by our own life and how we treat one another, how we treat Yahweh ultimately, how we observe what he tells us to do, this will all play into our long-term destiny. And ultimately he has given us a son in which we can rely on and call upon in the hope that we will be forgiven and, and receive of this grace. And this is what the Savior came to do. He provided his own shed blood that we may have forgiveness of the evil and the wickedness, the sins that we've committed in the past so that we can come into a right relationship with the Father, learning what he would have us to do and putting those things behind us that so easily ensnag and, and take us away from the proper worship unto the Father. As we go through and read John 11, we find in verse 12, the disciples then said to him, Master, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Yahshua had spoken of his death. So we find that the death is related to the sleep. 
but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So some of them didn't have quite a, uh, as a good an understanding as they should have, but we see this uh, in, the, in the disciples early on. In fact, Joshua said, are you now still so dull that you don't understand what I'm talking about? So he dealt with this, and we deal with this today, and it's not that you know, anyone or that <laughs> any one of us has a perfect understanding. We are all growing. We are all uh, uh, obtaining this understanding from Scripture by Yahweh's Spirit as it opens up our hearts and our minds to His ways and His understanding and a right understanding of things now and of things to come and the, of things that were. But we find in uh, continuing here, verse 14, so Yahshua set, then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sake, or for your sakes, that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, uh, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, so that we may die with him. So when Yahshua came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she had heard and Joshua was coming, or that Joshua was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Joshua, Master, if you, were, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You know, she's going through turmoil and mourning for her brother. But Martha said to Joshua, Master, if you had uh, uh, actually going on to verse 22, even now I know that whatever you ask of Elohim, uh, Yahweh will give you. Yahshua said to her, your brother will rise again. Now listen to this. Verse 24 of John 11. Martha said to him, I, I know, I understand that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Now what is she talking about? Well, Revelation describes this resurrection uh, of the dead in the, in the uh, going through uh, Revelation 20. In fact, um, there's a first resurrection mentioned there, and there's also a second resurrection. The first resurrection is what we are, are um, striving for, a resurrection to eternal life. But maybe we can take a look at, at that a little bit later. But it goes on here, verse 25, Yahshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will leave in it even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Master, I have believed that you are the Son, the Messiah, the Son of Elohim, even he who comes into the world. When he, she had said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here and is calling for you. Now Yahshua had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary had gotten up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to go to the tomb, weeping there. Therefore, when Mary came where Yahshua was, he saw him, or she saw him, and fell at his feet, saying, Master, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Well, when we come back, we're going to follow up with this discussion. The appointed times, or feasts of Leviticus chapter 23, were kept in the Old Testament, were kept in the New, and will be kept in the coming kingdom. The question is, why would we not keep them now? To learn more, request your free in-depth study entitled Biblical Holy Days. Write to YAIY 2963 County Road 233, Kingdom City, Missouri 65262, or visit us online at yaiy.org. 
You may also call toll-free 1-877-642-4101. We've been taking a look at a few scriptures that talk about death and also life. And throughout scriptures we find um, these areas uh, talked about. And we've discovered that death is like a sleep, and that's how Yahshua has been describing it in John 11. Continuing in John 11 and in verse 34, Yahshua said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Master, come and see. Yahshua wept. And this is what we do at funerals, because when we love someone, we miss them dearly, and we understand the suffering that is going on for others. And it is troubling. So uh, Yahshua wept. So the Jews were saying, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not this man who opened up the eyes of the blind man have kept this man also from dying? So Yahshua, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a, a stone was lying against it. And these were the type of uh, uh, tombs that were uh, burials back at that time, they eventually uh, cleared those out and made ossuaries around the Herodian period. But we find that uh, that even in certain words, we can do a word study in the King James Bible, for example, looking at the word hell, uh, the word underlying that is Sheol, and basically means a grave or uh, in the earth. And so there's insight that could be gained by, by that. And it kind of gets away from some of the ideas that are out there that are, are proclaiming you know, everlasting uh, torment and torture from a loving father. It, it doesn't make sense. But we have literature on these things. Uh, understanding hellfire is one, destiny of the unsaved. Uh, this is a free uh, publication that we offer, um, and you're welcome to. Uh, view that online or, or call us for a free issue or copy. But continuing on here, it, it says uh, in verse uh, 38, so Yahshua again being deeply moved within came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Yahshua said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Master, by this time there will be stench for, his, for he has been dead for four days. So there's no question about his, his mortality. He, he died and the stench from the rotting flesh would have been, been uh, uh, pungent. Verse 40, Yahshua said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of Yahweh? So they removed the stone, and Yahshua raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it, so that they may believe that you sent me. So this is a witness to them, to, to give them faith. This is the purpose of a lot of the miracles that were being done. But when he had said the, these things, he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Yahshua said to them, unbind him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. And so the faith was increased that day. The promise is that we also will be resurrected. If we have a belief in the Savior, if we are doing those things pleasing to the Father, if we have gone through a ceremonial burial, uh, baptism, uh, showing that we have died to this world, essentially is what, uh, what a baptism is. It's a, an immersion. And we are committing ourselves to a new way of life. In fact, we are brought up like a new person. The old man has been buried, symbolically. And we do this believing in Yahshua's sacrifice for us, that his blood covers us. and protects us from the penalty of sin, which is ultimately death. Now, there is an eternal death, uh, and that is described uh, in Scripture. In fact, when we go into Revelation 20, I had mentioned this earlier, we find at least two resurrections described. 
In verse 5 of Revelation 20, it says, the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is uh, the first resurrection, going back to the idea of um, that the, they are raised up when Yahshua returns. And it says, blessed and holy is the one who has part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of Elohim and of Messiah and will reign with him. And this is on earth, according to Revelation 5, 10, uh, with him for a thousand years. So this is during the thousand year reign. Uh, before that is established, uh, those dead in Messiah will be raised first. And we can read of areas like 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. But we know that those that are alive uh, will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Paul describes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We can read from uh, verse 50 uh, going through. It says, Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable first, and then uh, we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have been put on, put on immortality, then will come about saying what is written in Scripture. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Taken from Hosea 13, 14. The sting of death is sin. That is, the penalty is uh, death from sinning. And the power of sin is in the law. Where, how do we uh, know if we're sinning? In the law tells us if we're sinning and uh, the death sentence, death sentence has been handed down in the law for those uh, sinning. But verse 57 says, But thanks be to Yahweh, who gives us a victory through our master, Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the master, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the master. Yeah, uh, Paul, Shaul, had a good understanding of the resurrection and the process that was going to take place. He himself uh, said at the end of his life, he has run a good race, and then uh, after his death, when he is resurrected, he would be obtaining a crown unto eternal life. But we find that there's a whole process that goes through. And one of the scriptures that's often brought up for believers is that death for a, a believer is precious in Yahweh's sight. We read of this in Psalm 116 and verse 15, which says, Precious in the sight of Yahweh is the death of his righteous ones. Now, why would that be precious in his sight? Well, there would be no more toil. There would be no more, uh, you know, dealing with the evils in the world. And, and there is a struggle that's going on. We are tempted in various ways, just as Joshua was, but he did not sin. He was a perfect example and sacrifice for us. And today we don't necessarily think about sacrificial offerings and, and that whole process, but that is what was done uh, as a, a type of justification to go before Yahweh. But it never really changed the heart or mind of the individual. Uh, today, in Messiah and the Spirit being given, it does change our heart and our mind to be more focused and to be more dedicated and to have endurance and strength to move forward, avoiding the evils of the world and maintaining a straight and narrow path 
into a, a gate that leads into eternal life. Ultimately, Yahshua is the door for us, but it is not without effort on our part. But with the help of the Spirit and with the understanding that we have of the Word, it becomes less of a burden for us. And Yahshua's yoke is not a burden uh, compared to what the Pharisees and, and uh, others had offered, their legalistic ways, that is, their laws, covering up Yahweh's own laws. You read of this type of thing going on that Yahshua was vehemently upset with them about. He talked to them about this in Matthew 15, for example, and told them that they were covering up the commandments of Yahweh with their tradition and called them vipers and snakes. And how would they escape the lake of fire, essentially? And so uh, things like that, uh, lake of fire, uh, understanding hellfire is an excellent uh, resource to go through. And all it's doing is going over the scriptures and helping uh, one to understand uh, what is being said by looking at the original wording. Uh, there are Greek words like limne to peros, which talks about a literal lake of fire, but there's also places like Gehenna, which were referred to uh, as a fiery pit where trash would be thrown in and burned up. Uh, there would be no continuation of the trash, it would just be destroyed. And scripture talks about those incorrigibly wicked, we refuse to repent, refuse to do Yahweh's will, uh, their ultimate destiny is destruction. But we have hope in Messiah, and there is the hope of Israel. We have a mini study concerning this, uh, going over uh, Israel and uh, all who would join, just like anciently, and the grafting in process that was occurring in the first century that Paul talks about in Romans 9, 10, and 11, uh, that process is continuing today. But one thing that we do see in Revelation 14 is that the works of the faithful will continue on. In verse 12 uh, and 13 of Revelation 14, here is a perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of Yahweh and their faith in Yahshua, not one without the other, but both. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Master from now on. You know, it goes back to the idea that it's blessed in his sight. That is the death of the saints. It says, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Master right now. Yes, says the Spirit, so that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow with them, or follow them. And this does occur. Um, someday I will not be alive, and yet the archives of the messages and these presentations will continue on.